Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We are about to do another 12-box break of 2018 Panini Diamond Kings Baseball. This is Pick Your Team 6. You remember from earlier today, I marked this Pick Your Team 6. Everyone knows it's from the uh, from the same case, or the same master case. It's a 24-box master case, 12-box enters. And on the 16th, the Wednesday, there. I think this is from the from a pack piece of a piece of some, a pack that got stuck in the printer. There's Robert with Last Bot Mojo Marlins, and there's everyone else. Uh, we didn't sell the Rays. I don't think they have any hits. But if there, there may be some Rays cards or inserts or serial numbered cards, we'll randomize that to one person in the break at the end. All right, so let's do this guy here. Good luck, everybody. So there's four right here. You can see the four, two on top, two in the back. Another four right here and another four right there. Twelve boxes. Two autographs for memory of Amelia cards per box on average. If you have the Angels, that's Mary Lou. You'll be looking for a lot of uh, Otani cards and variations and whatnot. Good luck, boys and girls. You know what helps me sp speed up in this break right here? The packs, perfect. They, they use the right amount of glue. It requires just the right amount of resistance to pull the pack apart. When I pull the pack apart, it doesn't fall apart in my hands. If I, if I, was, uh, if I was in a pack racing contest, if I was doing pack ripping time trials, I would definitely... 2018 Bowen Baseball or a 2018 Bowen Baseball would be one I would definitely not use actually that's terrible I would use Diamond Kings Baseball oh nice Andy Andy says he picked up a 1971 Nolan Ryan tonight so tell, tell everyone Andy about the about your your project I think I think it's I think it's pretty cool, and I think like once it's done, I think it'd be I don't know how you're gonna how how do you intend to display it, but I think it should be pretty cool. Right, so here are some variations that we'll save, and our first hit is Kyle Farmer, two color dual relic. My Dodgers, who lost another one to the Marlins today. Uh, that goes to Jimmy Brandt and my Dodgers. There's Aaron Judge. Zach Granite. Keiko. And Ozzy Albius, nice. Two color, dual relic, and autograph. 28 out of 299. Rory Wagner with the Bravos. Nice hit, Rory. I think he, he's been a little overshadowed by, by Ronald Acuna, but but that but he's having a great season too. Excellent hit. There's Lindor, Sepia, Otani, Joe DiMaggio. There he is. Found him. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? Set all these aside over here. 
those are variations that'll be my hit pile that'll be my base card pile all right So Andy, uh, remind me again, what was the criteria that you had for your Nolan Ryan cards? Right, so you're, you're going, you're just doing 1968 through 80. Were you, were you getting them at a particular, at a certain, were you getting them graded at a certain grade or something like that? I feel like there was some sort of criteria there. Yeah, the Braves do well in Diamond Kings. They're, they're a good team here. At least for this case, but I feel like they do pretty well in the previous breaks we've done when this first came out. A couple months ago when did this came out? A couple months ago? Maybe a month ago. What game do we have? We have the... Oh, we got Angels Astros. We got Angels Astros on MLB Network. Oh, you're, you're, you're only doing, uh, you're not doing graded cards, says Andy. Has to spark your eye. Um, Astros, Angels, Astros are ahead, 2 nothing. Angels, uh, Angels are batting at the bottom of the ninth. Giancarlo Stanton. Benintendi, gray frame, nice, 17 out of 99. And we got Bradley Zimmer, autograph, nice. Two color dual relic out of 15. 10 out of 15 for the tribe. That'll be for Matt Appleby. Ted Williams, Splendid Splinter, Variation, Max Freed, Red Frame, Andrew Stevenson, and another Ozzy Albius, no ink this time, but two color dual relic for Rory. Joe Jackson, red frame. Shohei Otani, nice, as a pitcher. There's Max Fried, artist proof to 99. So Andy, what do you intend to, how do you intend to, uh, what do you intend to do? How do you intend to do it? Like, are you, how are you gonna display it? Is there a d display idea? You just wanna have those on hand? What's the story? All right, next box. Oh, looks like they got the oh, they got the tying rod on base. This is getting spicy. This game's getting spicy. Bottom of the ninth. There's two outs. Verlander's still on the mound. He's trying to go com go, go complete game shutout. So Albert Pujols goes to second. Simmons walks and Zach Cozart over three on the day, up to bat.
Good luck. Next one. Victor Robles, dual relic, original materials for the Nationals. That goes to Chris Callantine with that one. Red, Eric Fed. Bryce Harper, Sepia. All rise, artist proof. Mm. He's got a Verlander pitch a shutout popped up uh, Zach Cozart. They were threatening. Angels were threatening. Didn't quite get it done. Nick Williams. Rookie signatures for the Phillies. That'll go to William. Talon with that one. Frank Thomas, the big hurt. Nickname variation. We'll randomize that, unless Mary Lou also has the, oh, she has the, both the Angels and the Yankees. Sounds easy, no randomizer for that one. All right, next box coming. So Andy, the project is, he's he's got the Nolan Ryans in Half inch screw downs in penny sleeves. Doesn't tighten them too much though, obviously. Doesn't want to smash the cards. And then he's got them on shelves in the living room. All right. I think that's a cool, I think that's a cool display. You, you, gotta, you gotta send us a picture once, uh, once that's done. I always like to see how people display their hits. You know, I know that buying, reselling, you know, Playing cards like a stock market is great, but I know a lot of a lot of people here that shop with us, that collect with us here at Jaspi's Hobbyland, uh, just collect just to collect too. Now, uh, we we have a lot of people more than you think that just that don't sell. They buy a lot, they don't sell. They just want to get the hits. They love the thrill of the chase. And then it becomes like a dis a displaying challenge. I think is what it is. I would try to find a good way, like if you have like a card in a, uh, like a screw down or a magnetic or however you want, to, to get that framed properly I think would be pretty cool, you know? I mean a lot of the cards these days, especially the higher end ones, got a nice patch in there. I mean they, I mean you can argue that they almost, they're almost like works of art. So if you kind of display them as such, I think that could, that could be a, sort of a, a classy touch to a, to a man cave or something like that or an office or whatever. Because that's always been the struggle, right? Like, what do you do with all these hits, you know? Do they just end up in, you know, top loaders and shoe boxes and stuff and tucked away, you know? But I feel like you want, you gotta be able to show these off sometime. Like this! Like a Stan Musial die cut or a diamonds cuts cut auto piece of his jersey and a cut autograph for Chris Callantine and the St. Louis Cardinals. Look at that. Like uh, Diamond cut 7 out of 25. That is nice. Game use material. See, so like you got to stand the man. I mean, you might want to try to get like this professionally. If you're a big Cardinals fan or something like that. Like imagine this being professionally framed. It's got like a nice watercolor look on the back like that could look cool like a in a nice frame that's that's what i think especially if you're just collecting it and you're not going to sell it 
I would do that. Black and white, Clint Frazier. <laughs> Brian saying, I'm pretty sure that Stan the Man was a Mariner, wasn't he? Madison Bumgarner, the motorcycle rider, is going to be coming back to pitch soon, I think. Rehab assignment next week. Reyes Moranta, two-color dual relic for the Giants. Oppo Joe Mojo for Steven Kendrick. Steven Kendrick with that one. A little opposite Joe Mojo going oppo with the Giants. Nice colors. You got the you got the cream colored jersey part of the orange of the Giants. It's good. There's Ozzy Albius. Who I think is that Kelly Nash? I think she's just talking about Ozzy Albius. There's Roger Maris. Otani. The Goose. Chancisco for the O's. Uh, Stan Musil cut autograph. So Brian, now that I have you here, what's so what's the fallout after after another day or so? What's the Rob, what's the Robinson Cano fallout? Are people in the Pacific Northwest are they are they pissed? Are they disappointed? I know Cano's going to lose some money. He's going to be out some some uh, some paychecks. I am kind of bummed. I just didn't think that. Uh, I just didn't think that Robinson Cano would get popped for something like that. I don't know. Didn't. I don't know. Wait, didn't Bartolo Colon get popped for PEDs? But I guess no. No one. No one seems to be ang too angry at him. He's pretty beloved. Right, big sexy. Everyone seems to like it. Maybe, maybe it's just like, just because of his size. Everyone's just like, yeah, well, and we'll give him an excuse. Oh, so really, Andy? Oh, wait, didn't you mention that? I thought, I, I thought someone. Maybe it was you. Someone mentioned that last night. I forgot to respond to it. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was someone else. But yeah, the the pulled a Otani Japanese auto from Bowman the other day. First one you've seen. Brian's Brian's pretty yeah. You're disappointed than I, I would imagine. He's your favorite active player. He's saying Brian's saying he's a stand up guy, well respected, does a lot for Seattle and the and the Dominican community. Tice is upset. Yeah, I mean, I think they should. I don't know. I kind of go back and I mean, you just gotta clear everything with. With, I don't care whether your doctor is here or another country or whoever it is. There's like a list, right? Like you gotta you gotta be professional enough to be like, here's the list, doc. You know, don't f me up. <laughs> ninety eight out of ninety nine bat kings. Uh, that goes to William. Is that game used? Yeah, game used material, Barry Larkin. That's pretty cool. No, yeah, I get. It. See, that's why I kind of go back and forth. Like, I understand the kind of pressure that that they have coming off an injury. They want to get back as quickly as possible because, listen, they've got, you know, they're getting paid millions of dollars. They get it. You know, they're just like, well, you know, uh, it's my obligation to get back on the field ASAP. But at what cost? You know, like you certainly can't play dumb. You're still going to get punished anyway. 
I mean, maybe there could be an appeal process that, that says, you know, hey. I mean, I don't know what the, what the whole story, I think we have to know what the whole story is, right? But I guess if he's if he's not appealing, then you would imagine that he's just like, yeah, I kind of knew I effed up. There's Anthony Banda, two color, dual relic, and autograph, thirty-seven out of forty-nine for Brian and the Diamondbacks. There you go, Brian, on the board. There you go. Again, you started off with that guy. Nice. It's more Otani. Honus Wagner, that's pretty cool. Nice variation there. Otani Aurora. Oh, he did appeal? Well, maybe, maybe something comes up in the appeal. But at the end of the day, I mean, I don't know how how easy does Major League Baseball make it, or the Players Association? You know, do do they all get an email? Do they get a big? I mean, it's just printed out and put in your locker. I'm curious. I, like, I'm not trying to defend or accept or or, or whatever. I'm I'm just curious about the mechanics of it. Like, so if you're Robinson Cano, like like every when do you get that paperwork? Before every season starts, you just get a big piece of paper mailed to you or in your locker room. Just FYI, here are the here's a list of banned substances. I'm like curious about how that how that happens. I mean, I'm assuming there's a big list. Now, ball players aren't doctors. I mean, do they do they fax that to their doctors and they say, hey doc, this is what it is. You're to your private doctor and say, this is what we can and can't do. Thanks. Just about halfway through the break, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's go. Brian saying he just thinks what 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 is readily or like the like PEDs are regular readily available. And so it's just up to them whether they want to risk that or not. Maybe that's the case. Nice dual relic and autograph. Ian Happ, 11 out of 99. What's the Haps? Going to William Talon and the Cubbies. Oh, the list is easy to find. I see. Yeah, I just... I don't know. Maybe, maybe ball players just aren't taking it seriously. I don't know. It just seems... I guess I, I guess I'm kind of stunned. Like in this day and age, how does this happen? <laughs> you know, where you see high-profile guys get popped, you see, you see like so clearly that that Major League Baseball PED testing is is pretty aggressive. There's Verdugo for the Dodgers. Ken Griffey Jr. portraits. That's pretty cool. This is a portraits insert, but Brian's a fan. He's gonna keep this, so we'll we'll load that up. Maybe put it in a frame. I like Ken Griffey Jr. There's Reese Hoskins, Ben Intendi, two color dual relic. <laughs> Andy Garner saying, "Can I get a doctor's prescription pad on the black market?" Asking for a friend. You probably could.
Now, the back of this guy, of Kiki's baseball card, says it's actually pronounced Kai Kai. Go figure. That's what it says in the pronunciation of the Wikipedia page, too, crazily enough. Oh, I see. You have to wonder what he was taking because he got popped for a diuretic, which is used to mask other sub. Ah, that's clever. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like a lot of work. It must work if ball players are if ball players are willing to to risk being suspended for PEDs. If they're willing to go through all that, it must work, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't risk it, right? Uh, or the alternative is that he could be, oh, he could have been like smoking pot or something like that. I see. Well, there could be a lot of things. All right, kids. We are halfway through the break. We have six boxes to go. We are moving nicely through this break, folks. All right, on schedule. Could be for recovery. I don't know how much. How it's not like football. But I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know how much recovery was needed. Yes, I, I know what diuretics are. GAC. Thank you, though. What's up, Panda? What's going on? see one order coming in by the way folks so if you want to continue breaking there's my boy Walker Bueller even he was not enough to beat the mighty Marlins that seem to have have the Dodgers number Verlander just uh, pitched a complete game shutout and there's Brandon Woodruff for the Brew Crew. I think he pitched the other day. I don't know how he did. Maybe today? Chris Callantine with the Brewers. Rafael Devers. Black and white. Otani. Mookie Betts having a nice season. Corey Kluber. Ozzy Albius variation. Ted Williams. Andrew McCutcheon. Still Pirates edition there. Oh, nice. So Andre, who won the Prince Fielder Baseball, is a friend of you. I appreciate the recruiting, Panda. Thanks, Jason. Game used material on that one, Pirates. That goes to... Michael Gallucci, seal curtain with his Pirates. I heard he got a nice uh, nice ovation. Look at this, Roger Maris, five out of five. That's cool. That's a nice Roger Maris. Five out of five for Mary Lou and the Bronx Bombers. Mary Lou, congrats, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! That's cool, that goes. Probably have to take a picture, put that on the Twitter. At Jasmine's Hobby Land for the kids to check out. Along with that Stan Musel we pulled earlier, too. Yeah, Brian was like, I think he was a Mariner, too. Doesn't that go to me? 
I still, still, still got some boxes left, Brian. Still could find some Mariners out of here. It's Ty Cobb. Ted Lyons. So, wait, well, I guess first question is, do we think that before PEDs, do we think that Robinson Cano was a Hall of Famer or was on his way to a Hall of Fame career? And thing two, how much does this affect those chances? I guess if he was borderline... I don't know if I don't think he would have been first ballot, right? Just off the top of my head. I actually don't know what his stats are off the top of my head, but if he was borderline, then that's gotta that's gotta hurt him. I mean, we'll see what this generation of baseball writers how they approach that, because like the old guys the old guy like McGuire Bonds, they're still getting Clemens, they're still getting punished for that era, right? But I mean when you talk about I mean, wasn't it wasn't a rod pop for for roids for PEDs in like this recent generation? You know, so you know how does that how does that affect a rod? It's weird. I, yeah, it's I I I don't I don't know. Maybe it does hurt them more because because of, of the new of the new era where it's so much clearer that, that, that we're, we're going after PED use, we're looking for it, we're gonna search for it, we're gonna put all these rules there. GAC saying not Hall worthy. Brian saying he's one of the best defense second baseman, pretty solid offensive stats. Huh, I, you know what? How old am I? I need to refresh my memory on Robinson Cano. I mean, what, like his totals. He's been around for 14 seasons already. He's got 350, 305 home runs. He's a 304 career hitter. He's got 1,200 RBIs. 2,400 hits. Yeah. But like, well, you know, Beltre, Adrian Beltre was pop for roids, right? PEDs, wasn't he? Pretty, pretty clearly. But uh, no one talks about it. Everyone's just like, whoa, congrats to Beltre, 3,000 hits. What a good team guy. But no one brings up the Roy th the, the PED thing. I, I don't want to say Roy's. I feel like that's just too colloquial, right? It's whatever performance-enhancing drug there is, PEDs, you know. But I feel like nobody nobody hammers Beltre for that. Everyone, Everyone's just like, yeah, 3,000 hits. That's Adrian Beltre, great defensive third baseman, Hall of Fame. Thing, you know, so like, but I'm like, and, but does so does but Cano gets crushed for that? Everyone loves Bartolo Colon. I think he got popped for PEDs too. Big sexy, wow, that's sexy. Look at that Kirby Puckett out of five. Wow, original materials Kirby Puckett. What a hit for the Minnesota Twins, Landon. Are you still awake, Landon? Landon N. Neemer with that one. That's a great patch in there. Piece of his lumber. Game use material. Yeah, he had a great leg kick too. Two out of five. Landon Neemer all aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop whoop. Think about this. We got the Roger Maris. Five out of five. We got the out of five Kirby Puckett dual relic and the stand the man cut autograph. <laughs> That's right. Pete Rose never used uh, PEDs. There's Brian Anderson for the mighty Miami Marlins. 186 out of 299. Dodger Killers. Yeah, 
I mean, my take on Pete Rose has always been he should be in as a player. Otani. Otani. Yeah, the the yeah possibly vindicated soon with the with the Supreme Court and their decision, which I think was was pretty great. We'll see how long it takes California to have sports books at our horse racing tracks. That's probably where it'll start. Santa Anita, Del Mar. Honus Wagner. Should Jaspies become a sport book? Sports book? I don't know what it would take for us to get licensed and all that. I think you would. It, I think you would. I think it's like a bigger hassle than I'm. Than I'm thinking it is. It's not like I could just sign up at the county courthouse and be like, "Yep, ding, got it." We can. We can start making lines. We can start taking single game wagers. No, and Andy says no. Andy doesn't want us to become a sports book. Just for big games. Maybe just for the football. Just as a sideline, not like a main part of our business. Maybe we'll just do it for... We probably couldn't do it online, actually. So you wouldn't be affected, Andy. It would just be people walking in. What if we went old school? What if I what if I wore like a what if I wore like an old uh, old poker dealer visor? We have a big chalkboard out there. All the lines are in chalk every day. <laughs> Come in. Like the old like the old days. We got like street urchins writing uh, writing tickets. Ticket writer. There's Otani. Or we could just, what if we just rented space at the local horse track? Santa Anita is beautiful. What if we just, what if we rented out some space there? And you guys can make trips. Nice Don Manningly. Diamond Deco. I liked it better when they were this way. I think that was like two years ago. They were vertical and I think it was, it was a diamond shape. That's just a quadrilateral. That goes to, what's it numbered? Oh, bottom left right here, 25 out of 25. That is for Mary Lou and the Yankees. We could probably do it at the horse racing track. We'll rent a spot, a nice spot in Santa Anita. We'll break from there. And then people can uh, people can come visit Jaspies, do breaks with us. A lot of kids at the horse racing track in Santa Anita. There's Mikhail Franco, two color dual relic. We could, we could introduce kids to to sports cards. Give them give them our paper base. And then people can vacation to California, visit Jaspies, go to the track, bet on sports. I actually don't know how it's gonna change. California. I feel like California, I think, are one of the states that are going to be a little bit slower to move towards that. But we have the infrastructure. There's a lot of uh, a lot of tribal casinos that are here. We've got Santa Anita. We've got Del Mar. Um, we've got we've got card rooms like Hustler Casino down here could sustain a sports book. I'm sure they're interested in in and adding that part to the business, which will be right next to the new football stadium. So
So, you don't think it's going to change anything, Robert? I, f I f you don't think like there'll be sports books being added to like Hustler Casino, like other card rooms in California? I think that'd be cool. It teach the kids on how to bet on horses. I, yeah, teach them. The, I think the biggest thing, you know, well, first thing is we like to talk about gambling, like as a sort of, as a sort of, uh, you know, inter for entertainment purposes, but. I think the first thing everyone has to realize is you're going to lose. <laughs> you're going to lose more than you. Would. I'm shocked that I, I, I looked at, I looked at how much I, I I bet recently on sports, and it's really not that much. But then I'm just like I look back because I kind of keep track of it. And I'm like, wait a second, I really bet this much money on this over like the last six months. Thankfully, I'm decent at it, so <laughs> I'm up like. I think I'm up like 70, 75, 80 bucks. But I think, I think bringing it out of the shadows, because I think there's still a negative stigma to it in general, right? I think we kind of bring it out of the shadows, make it make it more open. That'd be good. Yeah, states are, I, th I think that was the thing. I think the federal, the federal law kind of blanket banned it federally without the states even having a say. I think that was the unconstitutional issue is what the court said. So then the court was like, well, let's make it a state's right issue. I think that's what it should be. And so, so yeah, I think that's what it is. Because or originally it banned everything. Perry mutual betting was something that we could do. Those are the horse racing tracks. Everybody pulls money together. That's where the money comes from, right? Instead of playing against the house. So, but yeah, if Jaspies was, was at Santa Anita, Robert, you're near, no, you're, I, I don't think you're near Santa Anita. But uh, anyhow, I guess maybe a little bit closer than us. Uh, yeah, I could teach the kids on how to responsibly bet on horses. Finding value, right? Finding value in in particular odds. You got to learn about. You got to learn about the. Uh, you got to learn about all the uh, all the riders, all the jockeys. That's important. Good trainers. You know. Win. Place shows, you know how to make more exotic bets. Maybe you want, maybe you want a a trifecta, trifecta box, exacta that box, box it up. Low, not as much commitment if you do that. Santa Anita is nice though. Uh, pick four is where they're. See, I, I, I have. I'm just guessing when I go to the track. Jersey and uh, no auto, but Francisco Mejia, one of the top catching prospects for the Indians. That goes to Matt. But I feel like. I think I feel like we're 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 kind of blessed with a couple of beautiful horse racing tracks. A nice Gary Sheffield, Rory. 30 out of 49. Bat and jersey and Gary Sheffield's autograph. I don't remember, I don't remember Braves' Gary Sheffield. Why do I not remember that? Huh. Kind of blanking on that, but I guess he did. Stan Musial, red frame. But I was gonna say we we are blessed with some nice tracks. Santa Anita is a beautiful location, and Del Mar is a great, it's a fantastic location. That's a beautiful place to place to watch. Where the I uh, went to school in San Diego, so I, I had I had chances to go there. And uh, where the surf meets the turf is there is their uh, is their whole marketing thing, which I thought was great. Where the surf meets the turf. Joe Jackson. There's Albert Pujols. And two more boxes to go, ladies and gentlemen. See, we're almost there. We made it. If I ever win the Powerball, Brian says, yeah, he tries to act like he knows what he's doing. At least I try. I, 
I like actually going to the window too to talk to the person. All my friends, they just go to the computer and they just go beep, 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 put in their bets, put in their cash. And I was like, you could do that. But half the fun is actually going to the, uh, to the old guy that's sitting behind the thing, have him press the buttons for you and, and all, that, all that fun stuff. And give you the ticket. You get a nice thanks, good luck, best of luck. Oh well, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Hope, hopefully I'll see you again. You know, you'll do one of those jokes. Those, the, I, I like doing those cheesy dad jokes. Yep. Hopefully I'll be, uh, I'll be right back here in a few minutes. You gotta talk to the person. That's that's part of the experience. You gotta look at them kicking the ponies around the ring. That's a good one. It's a thick card there. What's that all about? There's Paul Wayner. Max is asking, what? Oh, the Watson book? What, are we going to ship it in? Oh, it'll be safe, Max. Don't worry. We know. It's not our first time shipping things. I thought we were going to put it in a, in, a, in a business envelope. Just toss it in there. You know? And send, it, send it by carrier pigeon. There's Victor Robles, black and white. It'll be fine, Max. It'll go in one of those, I don't have any near me. It'll go in the slider box. We'll use some of the blank cards to make sure that it doesn't rattle around. And I'll get sent off with all of your other stuff too. It'll be fine. Ryan McMahon, I'll probably, might go out, what day is today? Wednesday? Yeah, we'll put a toss in a Ziploc bag. You know, put it in an oversized box so it makes sure it rattles around as much as possible. Uh, William Talon with the Rockies. Walker Bueller right here. Mookie Betts. I kind of miss uh, kind of miss Hollywood Park closing down out here, Robert. I don't know if you went out to. I mean, I guess Santa Anita is much closer to you than fighting the 405 down to Hollywood Park, but but uh, that was a little bit closer to me. It was right around the corner from Jaspie's, but that's where they're building the new new stadium in that space. Kind of miss that area. All right, so there is a pretty big, it was, I feel like, it just felt like it was, I don't know what if it's a big hit or not, but the card, it, the card stock was heavier than the other ones. I thought maybe it's something especial. So let's see what we got. We have, wow, out of 25. There we go. Cameron Gallagher. Nice. There you, go. you see a little bit of that Royals blue in there. That goes out to there. That goes out to Robert. Robert Rincon. We're just talking. You have a four hundred five up there too. Oh, yeah, you do. It does go. Does it go all the way up there? It must. The five I know goes all the way up there. I could take Brian. You. you we can just take a straight shot up and down the five. Go hang out. Actually. I'll top load this later, Robert, because this goes into a goes into a 180 actually. So let's keep set that aside. All right, last box, folks. That Rockies hit. I said that goes to William, right? That goes to you, William.
It'll be interesting to see it. I wonder if... I wonder if the people... It, 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 like, it, how... Um, how the uh, how the sports leagues will will tackle this, you know, because there are a lot of revenue opportunities there. Someone, I, I feel like someone on Twitter, I think it was either a, a an owner, maybe Mark Cuban, someone like that, would say like say like now franchise prices, fan, franchise values have now doubled. It was like this could be the speculation. So the so your your team's value could double because of the impact of potential impact of sports betting. I mean that's the ceiling, I guess. I don't know if it'll actually happen, but it's potential. I mean there could be possibilities where there could be uh, in-game wagering is a thing. So instead of we want tacos, right? Where if you score over, I don't know if if the home, I don't know how do they do it in LA. I think, uh, oh, was that Cuban who said that, JC? I think, like, it, it, like in a, in, at the Lakers games, I think if the if they hold another team under 100 points, free tacos from, like, Taco Bell or something like that. So instead of we want tacos, is we want the cover. <laughs> same thing, same difference. Jose Altuve, Sepia for the Strohs. We got Alex Verdugo for my Dodgers. Eight out of ninety-nine, two-color dual relic for Jimmy Brandt. My Dodgers. Nice playing horrible baseball lately. Actually, the AL West is not actually, or the NL West is actually not doing well. Jackie Robinson will also go to you. Bossman's favorite player, Brooks Robinson, variation. <laughs> Robert's like, I'll take I'll take overs and unders and tacos. I'll take that too. I don't know. It just adds a little different layer of entertainment, I think, to to the games. I mean, I I don't think it should be I mean I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll it'll it's not just gonna be like next week there's gonna be mom and mom and pop books all over the place. Not like every Stadium is going to have it. State to state is going to be different. Kyle Seeger autograph. Last box, Brian. Finally got a decent Mariners hit for you. That's out of 15. Kyle Seeger, Corey's brother. He doesn't do PEDs. Not like D. Gordon. Robinson Cano. Kyle's clean. Clean Kyle is what we call him. Two out of 15. Kyle Seeger autograph. Sticker, but still. It's a hit. It's a hit. Nice. Right at the end. Nice low number too. His brother. There should be a dual autograph. Where's where's the where's the brother dual autograph? I want Kyle and Corey on the same card. And a Jim, old Jim Bottomley. Everyone remember Jim Bottomley? Oh, man, I remember. I remember those days. He wore colossal cleats. Big shoes. Big shoes. Remember watching old Jim Bottomley? All right, there you have it, folks. That's the break. No randomizers, no nothing to do. Thanks very much, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Uh, we, we killed that Diamond Kings case today, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. We did it in one night. Love it. We've got some we've got some more stuff on the store. Just go and check it out. JaspiesHobbyland.com. Always something new, always something fun. Um, we'll keep doing it. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. JaspiesHobbyland.com.